the lamb shift doesn't just show zero point energy exists lamb won the nobel prize for this lamb shift lamb shift shows that we can do this bloop bloop that we can dip into the zero point energy because it showed that the orbital of the electron and the hydrogen atom can be impacted and this is why Hal put out first zero point energy paper was the ground state of the hydrogen atom. I've never met Hal Putoff, but I know this is the reason. Because he's saying we can basically create a trampoline effect using the zero point energy. We can tap into the zero point energy and it's going to bounce back. Like tap into it, boop, moves back. Tap into it, boop, moves back. We can do this, right? And that is the same exact thing that we are doing with our quantum communication device. And this is also negative energy. When you're creating this bloop, you are creating a negative energy event. You are you it, quantum entanglement is the idea that we are keeping momentum conserved. Whatever we disappear over here or reappearing over here, there's going to always be this equality. So then quantum sensing is basically just picking up perturbations in the ether, which we would refer to as gravitational ripples like the ripples on the ocean of the energy. We don't see them, but they're there. And they can be detected with the right configurations, which would be a Josephson junction. So if you're not familiar with what a Josephson junction is, I've been yelling this out now, and you're probably wondering, what is this, Ashton? Superconductor? Let's just, I used to say semiconductor. Let's just be real. Superconductor, insulator, superconductor. So the analogy is straightforward. You've got a freaking highway, a rapid speed train. Let's just say your train is a magnetic levitation train moving at Mach 3. And I've got a wall right here, brick wall right here. You'd imagine nothing's getting through this wall. Boom. That's where quantum mechanics takes over. Quantum mechanics says, that's a wall? Nope, I'm going right through that bad boy. Quantum mechanics shows that some electrons, it appears as though they go through it. Now, how is this possible? How can parts of the train get through the wall? The answer is they're not. The electrons aren't going through the wall. What is actually happening? The ripple, the ether itself is being disturbed. And when the ether itself is being disturbed, you are seeing a perturbation on the other side of the wall. Just like you would, because it's a wave. Imagine now it's not a train, it's just a wave. The wave's gonna collapse around, it's gonna go around your wall or through your wall very weakly, through the ether itself. Because your wall is not actually a perfect wall at all. And this is what happens. So you have a superconductor, a wall, insulator, and another superconductor. You send a direct current through it, a one-way current. And on the outside, what do you get on the output? One-way current comes through, goes through the wall, and a little bit gets through. You get alternating current on the other side. Whoa. Someone fact check me. I hope I'm saying the right thing there. I know that it transitions from one to the other. So, and I'm pretty sure I said that right. So what you're saying there is that you could set up this detection mechanism, this Josephson junction set up on some kind of microchip array. And you can just have it out there and it's just looking for signals. And you're just waiting to get the right phase match. And once you see the right phase match come through, boom. You've locked in, you've got your message, and now you're communicating. And now you have a direct connection back and forth permanently. Now, how is this all possible? Why am I sure that it's all just waves? There's no actual particle. That's how we have quantum tunneling. That's what they refer to, it, quantum tunneling. Because they think the electrons are just teleporting through the wall. But that's not happening because we know 
that we're just in a medium of particles, medium of energy. And what's happening is there's a disturbance, a local disturbance in the medium is light. Light is a local disturbance in the medium. So we're not actually seeing electrons moving through the superconductor. You're seeing a disturbance in the medium. And so the medium is being disturbed. And when the medium's disturbed and you have a very thin insulator, some of the disturbance of the medium gets through the other side. And now we can use that to make Morse code. We can use that to make Morse code. We can use that to make a quantum communication device.